A killer who choked a woman to death during rough sex will be free from jail in just over two years. Yep. A change in the law for tougher sentences in cases using the so-called rough sex defence came just two months after married Sam Pybus, 32, killed his secret lover, Sophie Moss, 33, too late to be used in his case. He was jailed for four years and eight months at Teesside Crown Court for the manslaughter of Sophie Moss at her flat in Darlington in February. The Crown Prosecution Service said it did not merely accept Pipes' word that he did not intend to cause the 33-year-old serious harm. There was insufficient evidence to prove it. Well, let's speak to feminist activist and writer Jean Hatchett. Jean, it's just, it's appalling, frankly, that someone can strangle someone to death and say, well, it was all part of sex and I didn't mean to. I mean, what on earth is going on? Is a woman's life worth nothing anymore? It seems to me that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're back to the situation of, um, you know, men being able to commit violence against women and the courts just being frankly unwilling to um, find ways of punishing those men. Um, this is not the first time this has happened. We had uh, the judgment in the Natalie Connolly case where John Broadhurst was also out in two years and he committed the most brutal acts of violence against that woman. Um, it is, still makes me cry to read the um, sentencing remarks in that case because they were so appalling. There was no way that um, a woman could consent to those levels of violence against her. Um, and the courts, even despite the um, incredible campaign work of the group We Can't Consent, who managed to get um, the rough sex defence outlawed or effectively outlawed um, in the domestic abuse bill, this, this case shows that um, the courts aren't listening to that. They're not acting on that um, advice or um, they're refusing to um, do what they need to do when men commit acts of violence against women. What I find astonishing here is it's this idea that, you know, if you strangle someone in a kitchen, then it's pretty hard to say, well, you know, it's, it was sex that's gone wrong. What, what is the difference with strangling someone in a bedroom? Strangulation, strangulation, you killed someone. And frankly, to be able to kill someone by strangulation takes a fair amount of force. I mean, I understand the CPS say well, there's a, a lack of sufficient evidence to charge him with murder based on this excuse, but does, does this mean any man now can turn around and say, well, it was part of, you know, uh, a, a complicit and consensual sexual encounter that just happened to get a little bit out of control? Well, I think, you know, this is the, the point that this should no longer be um, a defence that's offered, but it's but it's still happening. Um, and, and, you know, you, you're talking about men who kill in kitchens. There is uh, another instance of a man who actually walked free and he killed his wife in the kitchen. And, you know, that was in a, in a case of self-defence. So it really isn't the, only the case that um, this rough sex defence is, is at fault. There are um, other cases where, where men are just and not being effectively punished with the appropriate sentences when they are violent against women. And 27% um, of the women killed uh, by men, uh, as evidenced by the femicide census, were killed by strangulation. So this is a very serious act. And, you know, this is posthumous victim blaming to say that a woman consented to be harmed until she was dead. Well, Men can say whatever they like about the women they've killed. We don't have to believe them and the courts don't have to believe them. The woman can't say anything because she's dead. And her family have to deal with the way that that man speaks about that woman. And they have to deal with the heartbreak they feel. And they have to relive um, her killing through his words, through his narrative. And they will never hear hers. They only know what they know. Where all this come from? Because I'm sure viewers watching this will find this utterly shocking, the idea that someone can strangle a woman to death and then say it was rough sex. I mean, that does not exempt someone from having committed a crime. Is this because now that we, we, we've become potentially such a heavily pornified society that when it comes to antics in the bedroom, when it comes to watching hardcore online porn, children watching porn, when it comes to guys, instead of going out and having normalised relationships with women, instead can 
can live in this uh, often quite violent and exploitative fantasy land in the cyber world that actually is now dripped down into defences in court. I think you've absolutely, um, you know, you, you're completely in, in line with my views because the porn industry now has become... Um, so prolific in the lives of, of men in particular, but also, you know, uh, young girls will routinely sort of be drawn into thinking that, that this kind of behaviour within porn movies is the behaviour that is expected of them and that is normalised. Um, Professor Gail Dines, who writes uh, a lot about the porn industry and speaks a lot about the porn industry, um, talked of research recently which shows that 100% of the videos on Pornhub 100% feature acts of violence against women. So all of it is showing that it is normal during sex to be violent against a woman. And that can be slapping, it can be um, acts of simulated strangulation, um, you know, uh, awful things being said at the same time as hurting women. And so, yes, that, that, that sort of is becoming a normalised way of treating women when you are, uh, it's like a mass grooming of women to accept violence against themselves. You know, you're telling women that that is the way that you enjoy sex. Whether this woman was abused is not, is not for me to say. I'm, I'm not the court and I'm not the judge. But strangulation is a frequent tool of abuse. And it's a frequent indicator that that abuse will lead to um, femicide at some point. Um, you know, in that, that woman's abusive relationship. It's a very, very big red flag. So if that's being encouraged by the porn industry and that's being legitimised by the courts in these very, very low sentences and refusing to see that as murder, then, you know, where are women going to be when they look for justice? Couldn't agree more. It's utterly devastating. It's demoralising. It's depressing. It's frank, frank, frankly, it's damning on the fact that nothing is being done about this. So, Jean Hatchett, thank you for coming on and talking about this critical story. And I hope people living at home, uh, uh, watching this, uh, just realise the extent, the severity of the problem that society is potentially now facing from pornification. Well, let's talk to Anna McMorrin, MP, the Shadow Minister for Victims. I'm, I'm really pleased to have you on, Anna. The sentence has been criticised as sending a dreadful message to women by the We Can't Consent to This campaign group. What's your reaction to this horrific, horrific story? Well, look, my thoughts are absolutely with Sophie's family and friends uh, who have been completely let down by this ruling, but also not just them, women and girls across the country, many who have faced sexual or violent sexual assault or rape or, and, and fear, fear reporting it, fear going forward as to what may happen and what may happen to the protagonist. It's really shameful. It is shameful on this criminal justice system and just shows how broken the system is. Why on earth? How is this being, how has this been going on now for a, a decade, if not more? The fact that nobody is doing anything, really, as far as I can exactly. tell. I did a special on revenge porn the other day. I've done a programme on misogyny talking about all these issues. I've done a programme on porn. I can see quite clearly yeah. that there are so many risks today faced by... Not just women. In fact, if you're of a certain generation and, and, and happily married, this is probably all anathema to you. You may not have encountered this or you may not realise how prevalent this sort of stuff is in society. Why is it that people aren't standing up and saying there's abuse, there's exploitation, there's assault? Yeah. And now we've got a situation where a woman can be killed and a guy can say it's just sex. What is going on politically that we are not dealing with this? Well... Well, exactly. And you've put your finger on it. It is appalling. The justice system is completely broken. We have seen female homicide is at its highest level in over 10 years. We in Labour, we have a plan to make sure we address that, review those sentencing, but also a green paper which sets out much tougher sentences for rapists, for stalkers, for street harassment, making street harassment uh, uh, a hate crime, making misogyny 
a hate crime. These are things that need to be put in place. This criminal justice system is getting away with far too much, as we are seeing. But, you know, today and, and this week, with the, with the ruling that we've just seen, you know, we have seen two little boys, Sophie's boys, left with a life sentence because they have lost their mother. Yet the protagonist gets away with, as you say, two years in prison. This is not acceptable. And this is something that must be undertaken. I'm, I welcome the fact that it's going to the Attorney General to be reviewed. And we await to see that outcome. But, you know, something much broader, as you touched on, must take place here. This is about that wider culture. But the criminal justice system needs to not pander to that. They need to show the way forward. They need to lead with rulings that make women and girls across the country feel safe, feel safer. And if awful things do happen, they can feel that they can go and get justice and that their families, their friends can get justice because they are the victims. And it's victims that must be at the centre of that. I mean, thankfully, the rough sex defence law has now been brought in. We're yet to really see it tried and tested to see if it, it, it serves yeah. its purpose. But the problem is that rulings and changes in the law and the criminal justice system is after the act. How can we, what, what do we need to do or how can we work to try and prevent these things in the first place? How can we start beginning to unpick this, frankly, abusive and exploitative underground culture against women that emerges in free porn sites that actually, frankly, now is emerging, trickling down into pop culture when you look at the, the, the grotesque objectification that we're constantly seeing? Yeah. How do we put the genie back in the bottle? Well, it starts from the top, doesn't it? And we need to be leading from the top. We need to be putting that pressure on the government to make those changes so that we don't see a ruling such as this. And, you know, the Domestic Abuse Act, which had cross-party support for, for the rough sex ruling, uh, I remember voting for it last year. You know, that should have been used. Uh, um, and, and then we wouldn't be in the circumstances that we're in today. But, you know, it is a wider cultural issue and this does need to be addressed, but addressed firstly by and I'm working and talking all the time to to victims, to women and girls, to the police who want to make things easier for women and girls to come forward and report, but then take the prosecution through. But we are seeing record falling fallout of prosecutions. Throughout the system, women and girls just dropping out because the pressure on them is just too great. This shouldn't be the way. We shouldn't be second class citizens in our own country. Women and girls deserve better. We need to be on equal footing. And those protagonists, rapists, the stalkers, street harassment, misogyny absolutely needs tougher laws tougher sentencing and that's what Labour will do. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.